Hello, Mindsetters, and welcome to Grade 11 Accounting. In today's lesson, we are going to be focusing on asset disposal, an absolutely important section, guys. I'm sure you may have heard your friends talk about this section, those friends that have already completed grade 11 or even grade 12. And you're going to find that from now on, almost every second section of the syllabus is going to be testing something on asset disposal. So let's get started. Right, in today's lesson, we're going to focus on, firstly, the concept of asset disposal. What do we mean by asset disposal? Then we're going to be looking at disposing an asset at the beginning, during, and the end of a financial year, and the various general ledger accounts that will be affected by asset disposal. And then finally, we're going to be touching on how asset disposal impacts on the tangible asset note. So let's get started with the first concept. Right, firstly, guys, the definition of asset disposal. What is asset disposal? What is the section going to be about? To answer my question, what I've done is I've broken down asset disposal into the word asset. So we're going to first focus on what is an asset, and thereafter, our focus will be on the concept of disposal. So let's start by looking at the word asset. Now, you guys are already familiar with assets. Assets can be classified into your non-current assets, assets that last for a long time, as well as your current assets, assets that can be converted into cash within a year. Now, in the section asset disposal, we are going to focus on our non-current assets. Okay, so non-current assets. Which non-current assets am I referring to? You know them, I'm sure you do. Here we're talking about your vehicles. You could have equipment as well. And the third non-current asset, which I don't have written down, but I'm gonna write it for you guys, is land and buildings. Okay. Right, so in asset disposal, remember the focus now is on your non-current assets. Right, let's now turn our attention to the word disposal. Now, what do we mean by disposing our non-current assets? To put it very simply, mindsetters, disposing simply means to get rid of something. Okay, I'm disposing of something, I'm getting rid of an item. What item am I talking about? I'm obviously referring to now my non-current assets. So the word disposal, to get rid of. Let's just get the pen out. Right, how do we get rid of something? Okay, now the obvious way to get rid of something is I obviously want to get back something out of the item. So when I get rid of my non-current asset, I could firstly sell the item. I don't need the item anymore, so the best way is sell the item. Now remember, when we sell our non-current assets, we could either sell it for cash, in other words, get the money immediately, or we can sell the non-current item on credit. If we sell the item for cash, our bank account will get affected because money is going to come into our bank account or the business's bank account. If we sell the item, however, on credit, then you have a debtor who's going to be owing the business an amount of money. Right, now apart from selling the item, okay, we could also get rid of our non-current assets by let's put this down, by a trade-in. Now, what do we mean by a trade-in? This normally refers to vehicles. This is simply when I am going to buy a new item or a buy a new vehicle and trade in the old. So I'm selling the old, but I'm getting a new, or rather I'm trading in my old vehicle in order to get a new vehicle. 
Okay, another way in which we can get rid of our non-current assets could also be by donating the item. So we no longer need um, our computer at work and we decide let's now donate it to the local high school. So donations or donating the item could be a third way in which we get rid of our non-current assets. Okay, now I've just mentioned three. Um, another way in which you could get rid of an item could be where the owner takes the item for personal use. In other words, here, I'm obviously referring to drawings. Okay, so you're going to find that you're going to be coming across um, the various methods or the various ways of getting rid of your non-current assets as you come across exercises or examples from your textbook or in class. Okay, so let's move on. Right, the next key concept, absolutely important. We're now looking at the steps to follow when completing entries for asset disposal. And here, guys, I'm referring specifically to journal entries as well as your general ledger accounts. Okay, right, let's start off by looking at firstly if the disposal takes place at the beginning of the financial year. Okay, so what I'm going to do before I start with the steps, let's just get a feel for what do we mean by beginning of the financial year. Let's assume we are given the following financial year starts on the 1st of March. 2012 and ends on the 28th of Feb 2013. So at the beginning of the financial year will obviously be on the 1st of March. So assuming that the business decides to sell or get rid of their non-current assets at the beginning of the year, these are the steps that the accountant needs to follow. Step number one. We're going to transfer the cost price of the asset to asset disposal. And I'm going to underline the word cost price. So we're going to start off by taking the cost price of the asset that we are selling it and transferring this to an account called asset disposal. The journal entry for step one will be to debit asset disposal. And we're going to credit vehicles or equipment, depending on the asset that you are selling or you are disposing of. So very quickly, if I had to draw two T accounts, you've got, let's stick with vehicles as one account, and the second account being asset disposal. Okay, so I'm going to start by firstly debiting asset disposal and I'm going to credit vehicles obviously with that cost price. Okay, right, let's now look at the second step. The second step wants me to transfer the accumulated depreciation of the asset to asset disposal. In other words, my total depreciation that has been written off on the asset that I'm disposing, again, by means of a journal entry, I'm transferring this to asset disposal. And again, we're going to do this by means of a general journal entry. So we're going to debit accumulated depreciation on equipment or on vehicles, and we are going to credit asset disposal. So by means of a T account to illustrate the above journal entry, so the two accounts that are affected is accumulated depreciation on vehicles or it could be equipment. And then we have a T account for asset disposal. So we're going to debit accumulated depreciation on vehicles and we're going to transfer this to asset disposal on the credit side. Okay, so that was our second step. Step number three requires us to record 
the selling price of the asset that we are disposing. In other words, what are we selling the asset for? What is that selling price? Now remember guys, this entry could differ um, in terms of the type of transaction you are given or the type of information rather that you are given. So if for example, you are selling the asset for cash, you're going to debit your bank account. If you are selling the asset on credit, you will debit debtor's control. If there is a trade-in, you're trading in your old in order to buy a new, you're going to then debit creditor's control. So this is absolutely important. If you are donating the asset, you are going to debit donations. So your debit could vary depending on the actual information as per the example itself. Right, so debit, we've spoken about debit. You're going to then credit your asset disposal account. So again, two T accounts to illustrate the step. Again, I've got asset disposal. And let's assume I've sold the asset for cash. So my debit will be bank. So I'm going to debit my bank account and I'm going to credit asset disposal. Okay, right. And then finally, the fourth step or step number four, we now required to calculate whether we've made a profit or a loss on sale of asset. Right, now guys, remember, here you're going to require or you're going to be required to do some kind of calculation, which you're going to see later on when I start with the exercise itself. Now, how do we calculate whether we've made a profit or a loss on the sale of asset? Remember, we've already recorded or transferred our cost price. We've transferred accumulated depreciation and we've transferred selling price. Okay, I'm going to add on an additional entry before we look at whether we've made a profit or a loss. I said the word entry, I'm going to replace that with the word calculation before we calculate whether we've made a profit or a loss. Right, once I've got my cost price, let's assume my cost price is an amount of 10,000 accumulated depreciation written off on the asset is an amount of 8,000. Cost price minus accumulated depreciation gives me book value. In other words, the worth of the asset itself. So 10,000 minus 8,000, this asset is worth 2,000 Rand. And let's assume I then sell the asset for an amount of 2,500. Okay, now remember, the asset is worth 2000 I am selling the asset for 2500 In other words, I'm selling it for more than what it's worth. So I've obviously made a profit of 500 Okay, so if I make a profit, my journal entry would be as follows. So let's go now and look at the specific journal entry. I am going to debit asset disposal and I will credit profit on sale of asset. Okay, right, let's look at what happens if I make a loss. So remember, that could be possible as well. You could make a loss on sale of asset. Again, you're going to have your cost price given to you, accumulated depreciation, already transferred and then your selling price already recorded as well. So looking at the example that um, I've given you above, let's stick with these figures. Let's assume again the cost price is 10,000, accumulated depreciation is 8,000. So at this point I can calculate my book value to be 2,000. And let's assume the selling price I've now sold the asset for an amount of 1,800. That is how much I could get for selling the asset itself. So my selling price, as I can see, is now less than 
my book value. In other words, the asset is worth 2000 but I'm only getting 1800 so I've obviously now made a loss, a loss of 200 Rand. Okay, if I make a loss on sale of asset, my journal entry grade 11s will be as follows. I am going to debit an account called loss on sale of asset and I am going to credit asset disposal. Okay, you guys with me on that. Those are the four steps when there is a disposal at the beginning of the year. Okay, right, let's move on. Let's now look at the second type of asset disposal that you can come across if there is a disposal during the year. So again, like I did in the previous slide, I'm going to plot a timeline and I'm going to stick with 1st of March 2012 is the beginning of the financial year. The financial year ends on the 28th of Feb 2013. So let's assume that we've sold the asset during the year. So during the year would obviously be along here. So for example, we sold the asset on the 1st of September. That would be classified as during the year. If we sold the asset on the 1st of January, again, it is during the year, during the financial year. Right, you're going to find that the steps will be very, very similar with what I explained earlier on, disposing of an asset at the beginning of the year with a slight change. So let's look at the steps that we're now going to follow. Step one will remain the same. We are still going to transfer the cost price of the asset to asset disposal by debiting asset disposal and crediting vehicles. So step one remains the same. Right. The change is now going to happen in step two, our second step. Let's look at what we now require to do. Step two wants us to first update accumulated depreciation by providing depreciation for the number of months the asset was used during the financial year. Now, what do we mean by this? Okay, I'm going to go back to my timeline and I'm going to remove the 1st of Jan. So let's assume the asset was sold on the 1st of September. Okay, so at this point during the financial year. Before we're going to transfer accumulated depreciation, we're first going to write off additional depreciation. And for how many months? The asset was used from the 1st of March all the way until the 1st of September. So if we count that, we're including the month of March, April, May, June, July, August, and remember, it was on the 1st of September, so we're not going to count September. So we're obviously looking at six months. So we're going to first write off depreciation for an additional six months. By doing this, we are then updating our accumulated depreciation. Okay. Right. Once we've updated accumulated depreciation, we are now going to transfer the total accumulated depreciation to asset disposal. In other words, the total depreciation written off on the asset. Okay, now guys, please remember, when you are updating accumulated depreciation, you need to obviously make a general journal entry. That gen general journal entry will be, we're going to debit depreciation, which is our expense, and we are going to credit accumulated depreciation on vehicles or on equipment. Okay, right. When we are transferring the total to asset disposal, again, your journal entry remains exactly the same as the asset disposal at the beginning of the year. We are still going to debit accumulated depreciation on equipment or on vehicles, and we're going to credit asset disposal. Okay, right, let's now look at step three. 
Step three remains the same. There are no changes to step three. We're going to still record the selling price. In other words, we're going to debit either bank if it was sold for cash, debtors control if it was sold on credit, or creditors control if there was a trade in, and we're going to credit asset disposal. And then finally, step number four also remains the same, does not change. So let's just write that down. We can now calculate the profit or the loss made on sale of asset. If there's a profit, we are still going to debit asset disposal and credit profit on sale of asset. If there is a loss, we will then debit loss on sale of asset and we're going to credit asset disposal. Okay, so guys, during the financial year, the only change that we saw to the four steps, step four remained the same, step three remained the same as well, but there was a change to step two. Okay, so this is where you need to consider or you need to first make that update on accumulated depreciation. Right, let's move on. Okay, the final concept, grade 11s, that I'm going to touch on is what happens if there is a disposal at the end of the year or the end of the financial year. So again, our timeline, 1st March, 2012, 28th of Feb, 2013. So let's assume that the asset was sold at the end of the financial year. It would obviously be on the 28th of Feb, 2013. Again, one more time, let's look at the steps that we're going to follow when we're making the necessary entries for the disposal. Step one is going to be exactly the same as the beginning of the year as well as during the year. So again, transfer the cost price of the asset to asset disposal by making the same journal entry. Step two is where we're going to find that there's now going to be a change. So we now need to update accumulated depreciation by providing depreciation for the 12 months the asset was used during the financial year. Now earlier on we saw during the financial year the asset was only used for six months of the year depending on the date of sale but if the asset is sold at the end of the financial year we've now used the asset from the 1st of March all the way until the 28th of Feb which means we've used the asset for 12 months hence we need to update our accumulated depreciation by providing depreciation for the asset for 12 months. Okay, once we've done that, once we've provided our depreciation or we've updated our accumulated depreciation by providing the depreciation, we then transfer again the total accumulated depreciation to asset disposal by making the exact same journal entry that we made earlier on. So we're still going to debit accumulated depreciation on equipment and we're going to credit our asset disposal. Okay, step three guys again remains the same. We're going to record the selling price of the asset and then finally, step four also remains the same. We are now able to calculate the profit or the loss made on sale of asset. Okay, right. To sum up, guys, very quickly, an asset can be sold at the beginning of the financial year. It can be sold during the financial year or the asset can be sold at the end of the financial year. Step one is our cost price. 
which will still be transferred to an account called asset disposal. Okay, so that does not change. Transferred to asset disposal. Step two is our accumulated depreciation. If the asset is sold at the beginning of the year, we're going to simply transfer the accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year to asset disposal. If, however, the asset was sold during the financial year, we first will update accumulated depreciation. Okay, and once we've updated accumulated depreciation, then we're going to transfer the total accumulated depreciation to asset disposal. Okay, so that was if it was sold during the year. If the asset is sold at the end of the financial year, again, we have to update accumulated depreciation. And remember, this will be for 12 months or for the year. And thereafter, transfer the total accumulated depreciation to asset disposal. OK, the third step to summarize one more time involves our selling price. We're going to simply record our selling price Okay, on the credit side of asset disposal, that's going to remain the same during the year. Selling price again, going to record on the credit side of asset disposal. And also at the end of the year, selling price record on the credit side of asset disposal. And then finally, guys, our last step is calculate whether there's a profit or a loss okay and that step we're going to complete profit or a loss during the year as well we're going to still make the same calculation and record whether it's a profit or a loss during the end of the year okay so the change guys is obviously the second step for accumulated depreciation okay Right, I've given you all the necessary information. Uh, we've dealt with various concepts. And what we're going to do now, guys, is take a quick break so you can have some time to go and grab a glass of water or to grab your calculators and some paper. Because when you come back, we're going to then start with an example on asset disposal. So see you in a bit. Welcome back, Grade 11s. Just before we took a break, we looked at asset disposal and the various steps that we need to complete when dealing with asset disposal. We're now ready to start with an example. So let's get started. Right, our first question. The information below was taken from the accounting records of CC traders. The financial year ends on the 28th of Feb. We are required to do the following. So firstly, we're going to complete the following ledger accounts, properly balanced or closed off on the 28th of Feb 2013. So this is obviously the end of the year. We require to complete vehicles, then accumulated depreciation on vehicles, depreciation is the third account and then finally the asset disposal ledger account as well right the second part of the question wants us to complete the tangible asset note okay so let's now go to the information and let's see what's given to us in this question itself right so my information in front of me I've got balances 
on the 1st of March 2012, in other words, balances given to me at the beginning of the financial year. So vehicles, there's a cost price for vehicles, 250,000. And then accumulated depreciation on vehicles, 80,000. So these are obviously my opening balances. Right, then I get to transactions during the year. Okay, the first transaction, a vehicle was sold for cash on the 1st of September 2012 for 24000 The vehicle was originally purchased at a cost price of 60,000 Rand from Kumbi Autos. And then they tell us the accumulated depreciation on the 1st of March 2012 was 40,000. On the same day, the business purchased a second hand bucky on credit for 40,000 Rand. Okay, so clearly, the very first transaction, we've got a disposal but we've also got an addition. So we are selling an old vehicle, but we're also buying a new vehicle on the same day. Right, let's read on. The vehicles, or oh sorry, all vehicles are depreciated at 10% per annum on the cost price method. So that's a method for depreciation. Right, so to get started guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to firstly take my opening balances and I'm going to transfer this to my um, vehicles account and accumulated depreciation on vehicles. So let's start off with vehicles, my opening balance for vehicles, an amount of 250000 So let's go to my answer sheet, vehicles is an asset plus minus so on the debit side on the 1st of March okay 2012 I'm gonna bring down an opening balance so balance brought down an amount of 250,000 okay right my next opening balance let's go back to my information so I've brought down my opening balance for vehicles. I've now got accumulated depreciation on vehicles and amount of 80,000. So let's bring down that opening balance. Okay, accumulated depreciation on vehicles. Remember, this is what we refer to as a negative asset. It reduces the value of your assets. So on the credit side, I'm now going to bring down an opening balance again on the 1st of March 2012. Okay, so I've got a balance brought down an amount of 80,000. Okay. Right, now we're ready to look at our transactions for the year because we've brought down our opening balances. So my very first transaction is my disposal, but I've also got an addition. Now guys, please remember, when you have a disposal together with an addition, try and deal with either the disposal first or the addition first, but try not to mix the two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus first on the disposal. In other words, the asset disposal that has taken place on the 1st of September. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is let me quickly draw a timeline. Okay, so my financial year, not a very straight line, but it will do. 1st of March 2012, ending on the 28th of Feb 2013. So the asset was sold on the 1st of September. So let's just mark that on my timeline on the 1st of September. In other words, I've got an asset disposal during the financial year. Okay, now remember guys, we've gone through the steps already during the financial year. I'm going to start off with firstly, let's just extend our page. Firstly, I'm gonna start off with cost price. 
Then I'm going to look at accumulated depreciation. My focus then will turn to selling price. So this is step, let's just put the steps in. That is step one. This is my second step. Third step, I'm going to record my selling price. And then finally, step number four, I'm now going to calculate whether I've made a profit or I have made a loss. Okay, so let's start off firstly with our cost price. So if I go to my information, what is the cost price of this asset that we now disposing of? The vehicle was originally purchased at a cost price of 60000 So there's my cost price. So let's fill this in. Cost price and amount of 60000 And remember, I now need to transfer this 60000 I need to transfer it to asset disposal. So how am I going to do that? Let's now go to my answer sheet. Right, cost price 60000 is going to impact on my vehicle's account. Remember, guys, I'm now getting rid of an asset, so I can no longer show it in my records. In other words, my vehicle is now going to reduce by 60000 I'm no longer going to own that vehicle. So I'm going to credit vehicles with 60000 in other words, I am removing the 60,000 from that balance of 250,000. Where am I going to transfer the 60,000 to? I'm going to send it to a T account called Asset Disposal. This is done by means of a general journal entry. And when is the disposal taking place? If we go back to our information, the disposal or we're selling the asset on the 1st of September. So let's fill that in on our answer sheet. 1st September and the year is obviously 2012. Right, so there's my credit. Let's now go to the debit. The debit is obviously my asset disposal. Okay, so there we go. Asset disposal on the debit side, that amount or that cost price of 60000 coming from the T account vehicles and again the date of disposal 1st of September 2012 okay right so step one we've now just completed step number one okay so I'm going to tick it off we've now done step number one Let's now look at step number two, accumulated depreciation. Now, if we go back to what I explained earlier on, accumulated depreciation needs to firstly be updated. And once I update accumulated depreciation, I can then transfer the total accumulated depreciation to asset disposal. Okay, right, so what we're going to do first is let's update my accumulated depreciation. So we're going to start off by going back to the information, looking at firstly what is our accumulated depreciation um, at the beginning of the financial year. So if I go back to the info, the accumulated depreciation on the 1st of March 2012 was 40000 Okay, so let's put that on our timeline. My accumulated depreciation on the 1st of March is 40000 But remember, because I've used the asset up until the 1st of September, I need to update this 40000 by providing additional depreciation. So let's now do that. Let's update my accumulated depreciation. So let's go to, I've got a place here for calculation and I'm going to use that. Okay, it should be on the next page. Right, there we go. That's, there's my depreciation calculation. So I'm now specifically looking at disposal. So remember, when you are doing depreciation calculations, I need amount, I need the rate of depreciation, as well as the time that I'm depreciating the asset. So let's start firstly with amount. So back to my information. 
amount refers to, in this case, my cost price. My cost price of the asset is 60,000. And going back to the method of depreciation, I am using the cost price method. So I am going to focus only on the 60,000. My rate is 10% per annum. So let's put that in. Okay, so we're going to our depreciation calculation and the amount, the cost price that we are using is 60,000. 60,000 times the rate of depreciation is 10%. And finally, let's now look at time. So I'm going back to the timeline that I drew previously. Okay, so back to my information and then at the bottom. Now remember guys, we disposed of the asset on the 1st of September, but we've obviously used the asset for a certain part of the year. So let's look at the number of months that we've actually used the asset for. So we've used the month for uh, the asset for the month of March, then April, May, June, July, August, but we sold the asset on the 1st of September. So in fact, we've actually used the asset for six months, which means we're now gonna depreciate the asset by six months. So let's go back to our calculation on the next slide. So our time will be six over 12, six months for the year. All right, let's get our calculators out. So we're taking 60,000 the amount times my rate 10 percent times 6 divided by 12 which is obviously half the year and my depreciation or my updated depreciation is an amount of 3,000 right now guys please remember when you are updating depreciation it means that you now need to complete a journal entry a general journal entry and i'm sure you remember your general journal entry for recording depreciation right what are we going to debit what are we going to credit we are going to debit the expense depreciation so debit depreciation and we are going to credit the negative asset accumulated depreciation on vehicles. Okay, so let's do that. Let's start by debiting depreciations at the top. I've got my depreciation account. So on the debit side, because it's obviously an expense for the business, 3000 Okay, I would have completed a general journal entry for this. The contra account is accumulated depreciation on vehicles and remember for the first time this is now happening during the financial year 1st of September 2012 so there's my debit what account do I credit I've got to credit accumulated depreciation on vehicles so let's just find that accumulated depreciation on vehicles 3000 on the credit side and the contra account affected here is depreciation. Remember, guys, this is during the financial year, 1st of September 2012. Okay, now you guys must be wondering, but I thought depreciation is a year end adjustment. Absolutely correct, guys. However, there is one exception, and that is asset disposal during the financial year, where you've got to make an additional entry for depreciation in order to update your accumulated depreciation. Okay, so let's now do that. We've done the journal entry, so let's go back to our steps and let's fill in what we've now just completed. So my accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year was 40,000. We now updated it by a further 3,000. So my total accumulated depreciation, I'm just gonna rewrite this, 40,000 plus a further 3,000 
to give me my total accumulated depreciation that I'm writing off on this asset an amount of 43,000. And what does step two want me to now do? They now want me to transfer the total updated accumulated depreciation to asset disposal. So let's do that. Let's now debit accumulated depreciation and we're going to credit asset disposal. Okay, so let's do that. Accumulated depreciation. So on the debit side, an amount of 43000 is now going to be transferred to asset disposal. Okay, guys, and this, remember, again, dates. You do get marks for dates, so remember to fill this in. 1st September 2012. It's also important to show some bracket work. How did I get the 43,000? I first had my 40,000. I then added on another 3,000 to get my 43,000. So there's my debit. Let's now credit asset disposal with 43,000. On the credit side, 43,000 and this is coming from or the contra account is accumulated depreciation on vehicles and again for September 2012 okay so step two has now been completed right let's go back to our steps okay step two guys I've now completed step two, so I'm now going to tick off that the second step is now done. Let's now look at the third step. The third step wants me to record the selling price. In other words, what did we sell the asset for? So if we scroll up and look at our information at the top, a vehicle was sold for cash on the 1st of September 2012 for 24000 Okay, so remember guys, the word cash is absolutely important because it means the contra account here is your bank account. So let's now record the 24,000 below and let's now take this to asset disposal. So the vehicle was sold, the selling price is 24,000. We're now going to make an entry in asset disposal. So let's find our T account for asset disposal. There we go. Asset disposal will get credited with 24,000. That was my selling price. Your contra, sorry, your folio reference guys can either be CRJ or you can stick with general journal. It's absolutely fine. And remember it was sold for cash. So the contra account is obviously bank. Very straightforward, simple entry that you need to complete. Okay, right, back to our information. And let's look at selling price, now done. So this is completed, so I can now tick that off. Right, finally guys, the last step for asset disposal is to now calculate, has the business made a profit or a loss on sale of asset? And once we've done that calculation, we need to make the relevant entry in the general ledger. So for this calculation, I'm just gonna extend the page because I need a bit more space. Right, so we need to calculate carrying value of the asset. Carrying value, in other words, what is the asset worth on the date of sale? Now, in order for me to calculate carrying value, I'm simply going to take the cost price of the asset minus accumulated depreciation on the asset itself. And the cost price on this particular asset, if we look above, the cost price of the asset was 60,000 Rand. So I'm going to fill that in. Minus accumulated depreciation, the figure that we worked with earlier on, is the 43,000. And at the date of sale, this asset was worth Let's get our calculators out. 60 minus the 43. 
the asset is worth 17,000. So at the date of sale, the worth of the asset, 17,000. Right, we're now going to compare this to the selling price. What did we sell the vehicle for? So my selling price, remember I came across this figure earlier on, selling price is 24,000. So the asset was sold for 24,000. Right. Now, if we compare the asset is worth 17,000, but I was lucky, I sold the asset for 24,000. So I've obviously sold the asset for more than what it is worth. In other words, I've made a profit on the sale of this asset. And my profit, if again, I take out my calculator, 24,000 is what I sold the asset for, minus the 17,000 is what the asset is actually worth. I've made a profit of 7,000. Okay, right, so remember guys, if you made a loss, your selling price would be less than your carrying value. But in this case, we have made a profit, a quite good profit or a reasonably good profit of 7,000 Rand. Right, let's now record our profit on sale of asset. In order to record profit on sale of asset, the two accounts that are affected, again, the common account is asset disposal, and then we have the income, profit on sale of asset. Okay, so let's do that. Let's now record um, the 7,000 Rand in our T account. Okay, so asset disposal. On the debit side, I've made a profit of 7,000. The contra account for this is profit on sale of asset, okay, and remember in this question they didn't ask you to do the profit on sale of asset, but if we had to complete your profit on sale of asset, profit on sale of asset is an income, so on the credit side would be the contra entry for the 7,000 and your details would be asset disposal. Okay, right, we've now completed all four steps. What now happens to asset disposal account? Now remember guys, the entire purpose of asset disposal is to finally calculate whether we've made a profit or a loss on sale of asset, which we've already done. So if we look at this account itself, the profit has already been transferred to the income account called profit on sale of asset. This account now should, what we normally call in accounting, it should self-destruct. In other words, the debit side should be equal to the credit side and this account automatically should close off. So let's see if that happens. Let's add up our debit side. We've got 60,000 plus the 7,000 to give me 67,000. And on the credit side, if I add my 43,000 plus 24,000, I'm also getting my 67,000, which means this account now is closed off. Okay, right, we've completed the asset disposal part of the question, but remember we haven't come to the end of the question as yet because there was something else that happened on the 1st of September. So let's go back to our information and let's find that bit or what else happened on this date. Okay. Right, guys, I've got lots of writing here already. So what I'm going to do is let's take out a highlighter so that we can highlight the additional information that we still need to record. Right, my disposal is completed. Okay, so let's just get the pen out. The disposal is done. We're now going to focus on the addition. Right, if I read further down, on the same day, the business purchased a second-hand Bucky on credit for 40000 
Okay, so there is an addition, like I mentioned earlier on, and we now need to record this additional vehicle that was purchased for 40,000. Now, my two accounts that are going to be affected with the 40,000, firstly, I've purchased a new vehicle, so one account will be vehicles, and the second account, it was purchased on credit, guys. So the second account is I'm now owing money to a creditor, creditor's control. Okay, and the amount, the vehicle, costed the business 40000 So let's now record this in our vehicles ledger account. So vehicles, I've purchased a new vehicle, so the value of my vehicles will increase. So on the debit side, an amount of 40000 purchased on credit, so either General Journal or CJ, it's absolutely fine. And my contra account is, like I mentioned earlier, creditors control. All right, the date, when was this purchased? It was purchased on the 1st of September, 2012. Right, I've recorded my addition, but what else do I need to complete as far as this question is concerned? So again, let's go back to the information. Okay, the last bit of the information wants me to all vehicles are depreciated, so I now need to provide depreciation at 10% per annum using the cost price method. So remember guys, earlier on, we did do a depreciation calculation, and what I've done is I set out a table so that these calculations um, are much more clearer to you guys. Right, so my depreciation calculation disposal is already done and recorded, so that's absolutely fine. I still, however, need to depreciate the new vehicle that was purchased as well as the old, or sometimes your textbook might refer to this as the remaining vehicles. Right, so we're gonna start off firstly with the new vehicle, and what I've already done, as you can see, I've jotted my timeline again. So I've got 1st of March, the beginning of the year, 28th Feb, the end of the year. And I'm now focusing on the new vehicle that was purchased and the depreciation that needs to be written off at the end of the financial year. So again, one more time. 1st September is when I purchased the new vehicle. So I've used the new vehicle for this time frame. Okay, so my calculation will be as follows. Again, I'm going to need amount, rate, and time. Amount, in this case, refers to the cost price of the new vehicle. So if we go back to our information, the new vehicle, remember we just recorded the cost price of the new vehicle, it's the 40000 So let's take that through to our calculation. So the amount is the 40,000, the rate was the 10%, which is coming from the information and we used earlier on, times the time, time referring to the number of months that we've used the vehicle in this financial year. So from the 1st of September until the end of February, we're gonna include September, then October, November, December, January, and February, so if we count our little dots or little lines, we've got six, so we're gonna depreciate for six months. Okay, All right, let's now take our calculators out and let's work out the depreciation. So my 40,000 times 10% times six divided by 12 to give me 2,000 needs to be written off on the new vehicle. Okay, so let's fill that in, new vehicle, an amount of 2000 Okay, right, almost coming to the end now, guys, of this calculation itself. The last part, as far as depreciation is concerned, is the old vehicle. Okay, now remember, guys, this is what sometimes confuses a lot of students, but what we simply need to use here is a bit of common sense. Now, this business, CC Traders, may have had two, three vehicles for business purposes. During the year, they disposed of one, and they obviously bought 
um, an additional vehicle as well. But we are basically looking at the old vehicles. In other words, before the new vehicle was purchased. So if I go to my information, According to my opening balances, on the 1st of March 2012, my vehicle's cost price was 250000 And remember, this was the total of all my old vehicles that the business had at the beginning of the financial year. So let's take that 250000 to our calculation. Okay, I want you guys to watch very carefully. So my old vehicles, the total was 250,000. However, I did sell or I did dispose of an of a vehicle during the financial year. And what was the cost price of that vehicle? So again, let's go back to the information. Okay, the cost price, the vehicle was sold. The vehicle was originally purchased at a cost price of 60000 Okay, so watch again very carefully, guys, as to what I'm going to do with the 60000 Okay, so I'm taking my total 250000 minus the 60000 Why am I doing this? I'm trying to work out what is the cost price of the old or the remaining vehicles. Okay, so let's do that. 250000 minus the 60000 so the old vehicle sitting in the business or in the garage is or has a cost price of 190,000. Right, now remember guys, I did not include the new vehicle in this calculation at all. Please remember that, it's absolutely important. So now that I've got the cost price of the old or the remaining vehicles, let's just fix that. I can now work out my depreciation that needs to be written off. Again, amount, rate, and time. The amount is the 190,000 times the rate doesn't change, 10%. And remember, the old vehicle, we would have used the old vehicles for the entire year, the entire financial year. So I'm going to depreciate this for 12 months, the entire year. So my depreciation, let's get my calculator out, 190,000 times 10%. Okay, the 12 over 12 cancels off. So the total um, on the old vehicles, the depreciation is 19,000. Okay, right, now that we've done our calculations, we can do our final journal entry for depreciation. So let's look at what hasn't been recorded. Remember, we've recorded the disposal. So we now need to account for, in our books, the 19,000 plus the 2000 to give me total depreciation that I still need to write off for this financial year, an amount of 21000 Okay, and again, guys, your journal entry, you're obviously aware of this. You're going to debit depreciation, and you're going to credit accumulated depreciation on vehicles. So let's do that. Let's start by debiting depreciation, 21000 Okay, my contra account is accumulated depreciation on vehicles. Okay, and this is happening now at the end of the financial year, 28th of Feb, 2013. I'm going to credit accumulated depreciation by 21000 Okay, so the 21000 contra account here is depreciation. Okay, this is on the 28th of Feb, 2013. And again, always advisable to show some bracket work. How did I get the 21,000? Merely what I did on the previous page, the 19,000 plus the 2,000 gave me the 21,000. Okay, so I've now recorded my depreciation. So I've completed my asset disposal. 
I've completed my addition and I've completed my depreciation for the year. So all that's left now, guys, is to balance my T accounts, to balance my ledger accounts. Okay, so let's start now with vehicles. Um, vehicles, okay, you guys know how to balance. It's straightforward. I'm adding up everything on the debit side to 50,000 plus the 40,000 to get 290,000. Take my total to the credit side, 290,000. 290 minus the 60,000. Okay, so minus the 60,000 is giving me 230,000. Okay, and this becomes my balance carried down at the end of the year. So at the beginning of the next year, 230,000 becomes my opening balance. Okay, and you guys can obviously fill in the dates. All right, let's look at accumulated depreciation. Same principle involved. We're adding up this time everything on the credit side. Okay, so on the credit side, guys, I started off with 80,000 plus 3,000 plus 21,000 to give me 104,000. 104,000 minus my 43,000 is going to give me my new balance. So minus 43,000 to give me 61,000. So let's fill that in. 61,000 is the new balance carried down at the end of the financial year. Okay, and then you guys can obviously fill in the new balance brought down during the next financial year, 1st of March 2013. Okay, so completed with accumulated depreciation on vehicles. Right, my next account, asset disposal. Nothing for me to do with this account. This account is complete. And the final account, guys, is depreciation. Now, depreciation, remember, this is an expense, an expense for the business. And at the end of the financial year, all expenses are closed off to profit and loss account. So let's do just that. Total depreciation, 3,000 plus the 21,000 to give me 24,000. I am correct. Yep, 24,000. 24,000 is now closed off to profit and loss account. And this is done at the end of the financial year, 28th of Feb, 2013. Okay, and this account here closes off. Right, so we've completed our ledger accounts. What else does the question want us to do? Okay, so let's go back to required and what's left for us to do. We now need to complete the tangible asset note. Okay, guys, tangible asset note, this should not be difficult, especially since we've done all the ledger accounts. So let's get started. Let's go to our answer sheet and let's quickly recap on the tangible asset note, bearing in mind or rather focusing on how asset disposal impacts on this note. Now, remember, you've done this note before. There's going to be, however, one change because we now have asset disposal. So my tangible asset note is obviously a balance sheet note. I'm going to start off with carrying value at the beginning of the year. In other words, what is my cost at the beginning of the financial year? What is my accumulated depreciation also at the beginning of the year. So let's start by filling in the beginning of the year balances. So again, we've come across this, but one more time, let's go to the information. At the beginning of the year, my vehicles had a balance of 250,000. 
accumulated depreciation was 80,000. So let's fill in these amounts. Cost price, beginning of the year, 250,000. Accumulated depreciation is a negative asset, so open brackets, 80,000. Okay, just gonna just double check those amounts one more time before we carry on. Okay, correct. Right, so in terms of this note, what is the carrying value at the beginning of the year? Again, carrying value, guys, is simply cost minus accumulated depreciation. So at the beginning of the year, what are our vehicles worth? 250,000 minus the 80,000 to give us 170,000. Okay, right simple stuff okay let's move down the next part of the note now looks at movements movements meaning what happened now during the year in other words did this carrying value increase or did it decrease or did both happen so under movements in order we're going to look at were there any additions and additions are always recorded at cost Okay, additions, did we buy an additional vehicle during the year? So let's go back to our information. We've come across this, but let's just recap. During the year, remember, on the same day, the business purchased a second-hand bucky on credit for 40000 So there's my addition. This 40000 is the addition that I'm now going to take to the note. So back to the note. My addition at cost, 40000 Yes, we did purchase an additional vehicle, and I've recorded it at cost. Right, still under movements, and this is where the change takes place. Were there any disposals at carrying value? Okay, did we come across an asset disposal? Of course we did. We spent a lot of time on the asset disposal. We know we did come across asset disposal, but they want us to record it at carrying value. Now remember the word carrying value is simply cost minus accumulated depreciation. Okay, so if we go back to our information, where we wrote down our steps. Let's just find that page. Okay, when we did the profit and loss, we worked out what was the carrying value of this vehicle. In other words, what was it worth at the date of sale? The cost was 60,000 minus accumulated depreciation 43,000. Hence, the carrying value of the asset is 17,000. So let's take that 17,000 through to our note. Okay, so in our note, carrying value, the business is now losing this asset. So I'm gonna put this in brackets and the carrying value is 17,000. Okay, right. Back to movements, the third item that falls under movements will be depreciation. Okay, did we write off depreciation during the year? Yes, we did. What was the total depreciation written off during the financial year? And remember here, we're looking at old plus new plus disposal. So all three added up what was our total depreciation that we wrote off during the financial year. We've got the T account for us, so we don't have to go back to the calculations. Our total depreciation written off during the year was 24,000. That was our total depreciation expense. One more time, guys, how are we getting the 24,000? We taking, remember it's old plus new, plus disposal. Okay, so let's get our calculators out so we can double check. Our old was 19,000 plus our new was the 2,000 plus the disposal was the 3,000. 
that's our total depreciation written off 24,000 which obviously matches our T account. So again, let's fill that in. Depreciation, remember, reduces the value of your asset. So in brackets, to show that I'm going to subtract an amount of 24,000. OK, right, we're now ready to look at what is carrying value at the end of the year or at the end of the financial year. OK. So remember, this is my carrying value at the beginning of the year, and these are the movements what happened during the year itself, how this figure is now going to change. So on my calculator, at the beginning of the year, my carrying value, 170,000. I'm going to now add additions, OK? So plus the 40,000. I'm going to then subtract my disposal. 17,000. I'm also going to subtract my depreciation, 24,000. And at the end of the year, my vehicles are worth 169,000. So let's fill that in, 169,000. OK. Right, the last two lines are important because the last two lines are basically going to tell us whether we made an error or not. This is what I often refer to as a recon. Okay, recon meaning I'm checking my answer, this 169,000. Okay, so 169,000. Let's now check whether this amount is correct. So I'm now going to look at what is the cost at the end of the year as well as what is my accumulated depreciation at the end of the year. Now, I've already got T accounts that I have completed, so that is where I'm going to take my amounts from. So if I go to my cost at the end of the year, it's obviously my vehicle's ledger account. And at the end of the year, my cost is 230000 So let's take that amount through. OK, end of the year cost price, 230000 OK, remember, guys, if you didn't have the T account, how do I get the 230000 All I'm doing is I'm taking my cost at the beginning of the year, 250000 plus my addition, which is 40000 minus my cost of disposal, which was 60000 And that is how I get the 230000 We can quickly double check. 250000 plus the 40000 minus the 60000 to give us the 230000 Right, my accumulated depreciation at the end of the year, again, I have a ledger account, so why not use that ledger account? My accumulated depreciation at the end of the financial year is 61,000, end of financial year, so let's take that through. Okay, 61,000. And this must be in brackets. And now time for me to check whether I'm still going to get this answer of 169,000. So at the end of the year, if my cost is 230,000 minus 61,000, my carrying value at the end of the year is 169,000. So I'm getting the same amount, 169,000, which means I've obviously not made a recording error. I haven't made an error. OK. Right, guys, I think we've answered everything in this question. We've completed the ledger accounts. We've completed the calculations. We even looked at the tangible asset note. And remember, guys, this note, coming back to this note, the key for you to remember is there's now an additional entry for asset disposal at carrying value. Remember, guys, your general ledger and your tangible asset note the only difference is the actual format, the general ledger. Whatever is in the general ledger, as far as my asset disposal, as far as my tangible assets are concerned, is recorded one more time in the tangible asset note.
Okay, right, we've come to the end of the session. I hope that you've learned a lot and that you're going to use this to go and practice some more asset disposal exercises and you're going to master this topic. Until next time, it's me, Mahesh Lal, saying goodbye. Happy studying, guys. See you again.